Heme is a figment corporation that I created in my mind, which I have turned into a real business. Growing up in California was cool. Uh, I was a token black kid at my elementary school and up into junior high. But I, I had a lot of cool friends, uh, a lot of rich motherfuckers who I didn't realize was rich at the time. But it was uh, kind of an interesting place to grow up, being a token black kid. Everybody liked me, got along with everybody, had a lot of friends. Uh, could go outside, ride your bike to school in the summertime. You could just be out all the time. Pretty, pretty pr chill place to grow up, I would say. Biggest role model. I'm gonna come clean and be tell you I'm not a, really a big believer in role models. I think that people put too much, too much power on other humans when I think you should be trying to be your own role model and look within to be the best person you could be at whatever you want to be. Influence I had a bunch. Uh, so when it comes to, you know, art, music, video games, like I obviously used to love rap music, not as much these days. Well, I used to like Buster Rhymes. I used to like big hieroglyphics fan, a fan, Tribe Called Quest. Like all classic rap shit is what I still be playing today, up into some newer stuff. Nicholas F. Like music, and then I would say art of all different types. I was into graphic arts ever since I was a kid. Uh, you know, drawing, painting, sculpting, any any type of art, I was always a fan of. Probably like. Patagonia, North Face, Arcturic, some outdoor company, make some wild shit I have no idea how to do. I would definitely try to do it with a company like that I feel like I could make something that's completely outside of my wheel set right now. Pl plenty of them. Uh, <laughs> plenty of them, but I don't really want to sound like a hater. Uh, I found that putting too much, in, like, too much time thinking about that stuff is kind of detrimental to my, my health. So I've taken a new approach now when I see things that I don't like, I just try to maybe think about what I, what I don't like about something and try to create something that I do like versus just hating. Because there's, there's a lot of bad trends all the time, but I mean, with the way trends work, it's just unavoidable. There's just like, think about how many, how many bad songs come out that people love versus the good ones. Bad stuff is actually pretty popular and a lot of people like bad shit. Like some of the some of the worst shit be really booming. Nothing. Right now, nothing. Like people people gonna copy, people gonna create, people gonna copy the people who just created. I feel like we we close to the to the point where the simulation is glitching. Everything has been done, copied, redone, recopied, traced, photocopied, uploaded, retraced. And then live trace. So I mean, I feel like I, I say just do whatever you want to do. I try my best not to directly rip artists who are still alive, or if I know for a fact that it's somebody's work, I try not to take it. But I will grab a book and scan a page with no hesitation. The first order for Heme came from my brother's store. He had a, st a store in San Luis Obispo. He was back living there with his kids. He had a store called PMA Gallery, and he hit me up to design a t-shirt for him before Heem was a brand. He asked me to design this t-shirt. It was an idea we had had for a few years. I made the shirts, and that's how Heem came to be. So that was the first order. Well, uh, the shirt that I made ended up getting some traction on the internet. People were saying they wanted them. I was part owner at the good company at the time. So I was you know, around people who were actively buying products. So I just saw there was an interest, and I just, after that first tea, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to continue making things. And one tea led to another, led to a collection, led to me branching out to just focus on him, and it just kind of kept rolling on from there. I wouldn't even say so much that we're moving in a different direction. Uh, honestly, I had that logo commissioned from an artist in Brazil named uh, he goes by Dying in Kyoto on Twitter. And I just uh, get like some inspiration that I told him was that I wanted something that felt like late 90s, early 2000s kind of a vibe without being a copy of anything else. And he hit the nail on the head. Like if you, when people look at it, the response that I'm getting is like, what is this a copy of? Or like, it looks so, it looks so familiar. What, like, what did you flip? And I'm like, nothing. It just, it just hits all the marks to make it feel familiar, but while still being original. 
And I guess that kind of hits on what you were saying about the imitation versus like inspiration. You can make things that feel, that feel like something, like look like, smell like, but it's original, its own thing. I mean, I feel like that's a lot of, part of the reason probably why a lot of people do flips. Like, look how many fake Nike sold last year. Them shits was trash. But because it looks like a Jordan 1, but it's got a, a thumbs up instead of a swoosh, people acting like that shit's hot and buying them for 200 bucks a pop. Shits is trash, B. <laughs> the shits is trash, B. <laughs> Black Force is all day, man. Them shits is trash, B. Uh, the one I'm gonna drop this year, it's a ceramic head piggy bank combo. So the, the head is the base and it is hollow and the brain fits inside of it and it's hollow, but it's a piggy bank as well, which can be removed. And then you could plant something or use the head as a dish or whatever you want. So they're each individually separate, but then it fits together to be a pothead money mine. So y'all ain't seen it yet, but get your, get your wallets ready because it's gonna be the most expensive shit I ever drop. Uh, I kind of gonna steal Jermaine's answer a little bit. I'm trying to push myself to make uh, more things from scratch. So I'm trying to make more cut and sew product, but I, I don't want to just make cut and sew just to make it. I want to make pieces that I feel are actually pushing me in a direction to learn more about really about making clothes and more about the other sides of the fashion industry that I haven't touched on as much. And to just continue to keep it interesting, you know, like. I'm a little bit older too, like I'm 34. I'm not trying to have only graphic tees in my closet. Like I wanna have pieces that I can continue to wear as I get older, like my style continues to change. I wanna be a nice looking grown man, but I still wanna be wearing heme head, head to toe as much as possible. I wouldn't really say we have a collab, but they, they, they show mad love and support. I've been selling my clothes there for like about three or four years now. Uh, the homie Malachi is one of their buyers and a, a friend just from the, the internet world, can, you know, turn into real real life. And uh, they, they show my love. So I would say I could, I'm going to continue to work with them as much as possible. Shout out to Urban Outfitters. I used to work in the stock room. Yeah, that was my, like my first job in SF. The Kai collab was the, my favorite thing that I worked on in recent history. It was a super fun project to work on. Uh, their whole team is super, super cool. Uh, you know, they're under the same uh, Huff umbrella, RIP Keith. But that was a great project. They let me take creative control to make a shoe that they really hadn't even done before. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, basically, we had the meeting scheduled. I was just looking at the shoes on their website and just started Frankensteining some shit in Photoshop. Went into the meeting with an idea and they were like, yeah, let's, let's run it up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, we tweaked it. Like, we worked on that project probably for like around a year because uh, COVID did kind of pop up while we were working on it and push it back a few months. So it was like the, the rollout and a few things were a little different than we had originally planned, but it was, uh, it was, it was pretty, pretty easy, like creative project to work on. It was like just a team effort, but everyone was kind of just coming in the same direction. I'm gonna come all the way clean with you. The 33 in him is not even on the numerology at all. The 33 started as Leet Speak because I'm a fucking nerd. So <laughs> back when I used to play computer games, right. motherfuckers would always type things with letters. So right. the 33 was just the E flipped into a 33 on some ASCII art type vibe. But if you want to take it the numerology way, there's a lot of meanings you can get with the three. Three times three equals nine. You know, if 27 letters and we created the future yesterday, we can we can get real weird with it. So it's kind of, it's kind of, I kind of like having things for people to interpret and play with and design elements I can use when I'm making graphics. But it ain't, it ain't really that serious. Uh, we're going to keep dropping. Uh, we're going to keep we're going to keep making new shit. We're going to keep selling these packages online. We're going to keep growing the brand. We're going to keep collaborating with the homies brands and artists around the world and just trying to be the best we can be.